A very warm welcome to all of you. Thank you very much for joining us. My name is Sibu Siso and this is Tenfold Life. Coming straight to you from our Johannesburg studio, we're bringing you another exciting episode of Mathematics, which is one of many math and physical science shows that we have lined up for you this year. This show is proudly made possible by Liberty, and it comes to you weekdays, Monday to Thursday, from 5 p.m. to 6 p.m., so do make sure that you don't miss out. You can get in touch with us via social media. For more details on this, just go to our Facebook page. In addition, you can also send us your questions and comments on WhatsApp, and you stand a chance to win great prizes such as television sets and a lot of very awesome prizes. Great, without that, there is more that we actually pre-packaged for you to access all that revision content. We've got an app that you can find on your favorite app store. Just go to your favorite app store and look for the Tenfold Education app. It will give you access to awesome content that will help you revise for your end of the year exams. Without any further ado, we'll jump straight to the math. This week we are focusing on factorizing three degree polynomials. We're also doing factor and remainder theorem. Next week, we are going to actually jump into calculus. So this is kind of like preparing ourselves for the calculus. So if you have those questions, guys, please keep them coming through. You stand a chance to win awesome prizes, send them on WhatsApp. We'll be more than glad to look into them. So we're going to go to a question that was sent to us by Zoe. Let's go and check out what Zoe had to say. Tenfold, um, I would like you to help me with the questions as shown on this paper. Uh, thank you. Right, thank you very much for that, Zoe. That is an awesome question. We are going to actually try and see how we can actually make sense of this. This is there's two things that are happening here. There's the factor theorem as well as the remainder theorem. The, the remainder theorem says when you've got a function, right, a particular function that you're looking at and you are div dividing it by another polynomial, you might get a remainder. In order to find that remainder, you just need to substitute the value. Some number, if it gives you a particular value, that value will be the, remain uh, the, will be the remainder of the function. So we're going to go and check what is going on with this question so that we can actually be able to make more sense of it. Uh, when you look at this question, it says to us, determine the remainder if each of uh, these equations are divided by the factor given below. So what I'm looking at right now is a function that says f of x equals x cubed minus 5x squared plus 2x plus 8 divided by x plus 10. So this question is asking us to find the remainder. And according to the factor remainder theorem, we have to find the remainder here. According to the factor remainder theorem, um, if I look at what is given here, we are given x plus 10, which is equal to zero, right? If I transpose the 10 and take it to the right hand side, I'm gonna be sitting with x is equal to negative 10. Now, this basically means that if I substitute my x as 10 in the function, whatever the value that I'm going to get there will be the remainder of the function. That is what the factor theorem and remainder theorem actually says to us. So if I take this value of 10 that was given to us, and I sub it wherever I see x in the given function there, whatever the value that I'm going to get will be the remainder that we are getting when we are dividing these two. So let's see what we are going to get from this. f of x, right, was actually given to us as x cubed minus 5x squared plus 2x plus 8. Now, if I sub minus 10 there, let's see what will happen. If I substitute minus 10 in this, if I sub minus 10, we are going to basically get minus 10 in brackets to the power of 3, minus 5 in brackets, uh, minus 10, we've got a square there, plus 2 into minus 10, plus 8, which will actually give us a remainder. So let's see now if I use my calculator to try and figure out what are we actually going to get when we substitute 10 in this function. We are going to have open bracket there, you've got negative 10, close bracket squared, sorry, that's a cube, right? Um, yes, okay, minus, we've got five into um, negative 10 again, close bracket to the power of two, right? We've got plus two into um, negative 10 again, right? And if I close brackets and try to see what my last term is here, let's look, it's actually the plus eight. So if I put the plus eight at the end, what answer do I get? you get negative 1512. If we just check if everything is okay, negative 10 cubed, minus five into minus 10 squared, 
plus 2 into minus 10 plus 8. When you press the equality sign, you get a value of negative 15, 12. So that means that um, f of negative 10 is giving us a value of negative 1, 5, 1, 2. And this is actually the remainder. So this comes straight from the factor remainder theorem. It says if you sub that value of minus 10, whatever the answer that you're getting will be the remainder of uh, the polynomial that you get when you are dividing. Let's go again and check uh, this question to see the other sub-question of Zoe's question. It says to us, um, the factor theorem says if a polynomial f of x is divided by ax minus b. Now this is the part that actually explains quite well for you guys to be able to understand why am I substituting that particular value I'm substituting and why do I get the answer that I'm getting. So ax minus b, if a particular polynomial is divided by ax minus b, right, let's look at that. If I divide a polynomial, <coughs> excuse me, by ax minus b and f of b over a gives us a zero, then that particular um, device that I'm using will actually be a factor of the function. So let's see what will happen there. Right, if I take that ax minus b and equate it to zero and try to solve for x, what will happen? You take b to the right hand side, you end up with ax equals b, and then you divide both sides by b, what you will end up with is x is going to be equal to b over a. So apparently, if I substitute x as b over a in the function, and I get an answer of zero, then that particular um, divisor that I was using is actually going to be the factor of the equation. All right, so let's see what will happen now. Um, if I look at this, which is f of x, let's see what will happen. Um, f of x right now in this question is given to us, but we are told to uh, divide by, let's see what is happening here. If a polynomial f of x is divided by ax minus b and f of b over a equals to zero, then ax minus b will be a factor of f of x. So we have to divide this, right, this function, we have to divide it by 2x plus 1. Let's see what will happen. If I do the same thing that we did uh, with ax minus b, my 2x plus 1, which is equal to 0, and you transpose the 1, you'll get 2x is minus 1. If you divide both sides by 2, your x is going to come out as minus 1 over 2. So if I sub x as minus 1 over 2, this must give us an answer of 0 for 2x plus 1 to be a factor of the polynomial that we are dealing with. So let me sub minus 1 over, t, uh, 1 over 2 and see what will happen there. So minus 1 over 2 will be 2 into minus 1 over 2 cubed plus 11 into minus 1 over 2 squared right, minus 23 into minus a half, minus 14. And let's see what our calculator is going to say when we try to put in the value of uh, minus half in our function. What? Well, it's going to basically be, let's see what will happen, it will be 2 into, we've got minus 1 over 2, right, and then close bracket to the power of uh, 3. Then we've got plus 11, open bracket into minus 1 over 2, close bracket with a square, and this is minus, uh, is it 23? Yes, it is 23, open bracket, and then we've got minus 1 over 2, close bracket there, and at the end we've got minus 14, so minus 14, what answer do you get? Well, it gives us an answer of zero. Just because it's giving you an answer of zero, this means it doesn't have a remainder. Unlike the previous question that we substituted the value of something and then we ended up with a value. So this basically means that you get a value of um, a remainder of zero. If the remainder that you are getting from this is zero, then it does mean that indeed your 2x plus 1 is a factor. 2x plus 1 is a is a factor of this. Right, let's go again to the other part of the question quickly. Um, the next part says to us that if a polynomial f of x is divided by ax minus b, the remainder will be f of b over a. Now this is actually speaking to us about um, the very first question that we did that uh, we substituted the value of and then we ended up with an answer of um, negative 1512. So let's see what will happen here. If I look at what we are given, this x plus one, you just take x plus one, equate it to zero, and then you transpose the one, it's gonna be minus one. Now, if I sub this x value on the, on the polynomial that is given, 
whatever the answer that I'm going to get is the remainder that we will get when we divide these two functions. That is what the remainder theorem actually says to us. So let's try to see what will happen when I sub 1 on this function. My f of x, right, f of x is x cubed plus 2x squared plus x plus 1. When I sub here, minus 1, we're going to get minus 1 cubed plus 2 into minus 1 squared plus um, um, negative 1 plus 1. So this is going to be minus 1, right? And it's going to basically be plus 2 minus 1 plus 1. This is 3 minus 2. It actually gives us an answer of 1 because 2 minus 2 is 0. And then we're going to have a remainder of 1. So this value that you are getting is the remainder. The remainder uh, theorem is not, not a very complicated concept. It's a very, very easy thing to work with. It actually uh, allows you to find the remainder when a particular function is divided by a polynomial. So always take whatever the um, device I was given, make sure x is the subject of the formula, take that and substitute in the cubic or whatever the uh, polynomial you could have been given. The remainder that you're getting, the number that you're going to get there is going to be remainder. Thank you very much for that question, Zoe. We are now going to go to an ad break. After that, Philippa will be ready to take another question.